Yo, what's good? Aaron Basil here. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how I made my new single called Bad Enough. It's a collaboration between me and a fellow Chicago singer-songwriter, Aya Ito. So I'm gonna walk you guys through how the collaboration started, what she sent me first, and how I used that to reimagine the song in my own style. So I'll show you guys the project file and exactly how I made the song. It's actually out now on SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Music, or whatever you guys do so you can go check it out. I'll leave the link in the description box below, as usual. I also want to let you guys know that I've put some timestamps so you can navigate to different sections of this video if that's how you want to rock out. And if you haven't heard the song yet, here's a little preview of how it goes. <laughs> earlier, Aya Ito is a fellow singer-songwriter based out here in the city of Chicago. I'll link her stuff below in the description. But anyways, I found her through a mutual producer friend of mine that had worked with her before and asked him how I could contact her to work on something because I loved her voice and how uh, what they had made before. So I sent her a message introducing myself, got to know her and told her how much I love her music and how the stuff she had put out before. So I asked her if I could reimagine one of her songs, Bad Enough, which was originally a vibey, down-tempo infused record into a more upbeat, you know, up dancey stuff. So she sent me the vocal stamps to that song and I went straight to work. But before I show you guys how I got started with the song, here's a preview of the original song to get you an idea of how it sounded. The first thing that I wanted to start with was the acapella that she sent me. So I'm gonna remove all the, I did put it in a vocal stack. I did make some, make some um, vocal chops in the intro, but I didn't wanna start with that. I just wanted to show you what it sounded like. Obviously you heard it from the preview that I just played you, but this is kind of what it sounded like. Let me remove all the uh, effects that I have on that. And right here, just so you hear what it sounds like, this is what I managed to work around. I, I pretty much kept the entire vocal and I just worked with it. So I didn't do too much fancy stuff outside of like just adding some additional chops. There were already some vocal chops towards the end, the outro. So let me show you what I mean. So the intro, kind of like part of the vocals. Was I like, don't really know you, but I really want you. Can't stop thinking about you now. Going crazy for you, swear I feel I need you, man you got me wondering how. And then towards the end you can see uh, the, the vocal chops that already came that was part of the song, so were these. <laughs> So I kept everything like that. I just added my own kind of vocal chops. So I'm gonna start breaking it down section by section. So I have it written on here on the screen just because the way I started it was kind of weird. So it usually starts on one obviously, but I messed around and I moved the start time to there. I don't know why at this point, <laughs> but this is supposed to be from one to like five or whatever. So this should be like intro, verse and whatnot. So this is the intro. And this is actually the verse that comes up. It's not really in order, but I'm going to just start out breaking it off by this chunk. So I'm going to start with the intro, how the song starts. So let's do that. Um, let's just start where it says verse on there. We're going to start there. So this is how actually it went down. Let me actually unmute. Actually bring back the stuff that I muted. And that's what I meant to say. Then let's get back to normal and let's just play the intro and here we go. My computer does a lag as well too. <laughs> Okay, 
what I did was because of those vocals, what I gotten, I took, I think I might have sent some of them in Ableton. I would have chopped them up. I found parts that I wanted and uh, I was chopping them up and I, let me see, see if it says intro vocal chops or they're like the ahs kind of thing. So I did that. It was just like this part. It went like, mm, let me go from scratch. Oh, one of the things that I did was because I wanted to automate the volume of it as it in, like started from the beginning because I do have the chords like slowly building up to create that anticipation for the sound. So let's go to this part where you can hear the vocal chops instead of the automation itself, so. Okay, so you can hear, it has like panning. I only put uh, the LFO 2 on there. I do have my custom like preset thing um, where I routed, you know, like a, custom shape on there and what I'm doing with that is that I have let me just play it as it goes okay so what I'm doing I'm routing the cutoff you know to a filter and whatnot so it's actually not showing it moving as much but the panning is because of this you know so I have it panning left and right I do have on a bus, I'm sending it to, because it's part of a vocal stack, it's a group stack, so I have an entire bus channel. I will show you guys in a little bit. I just wanted to show you the vocal chops first. When I go to the bus, we'll break that down as well, but the vocal chops, it's just like the ahs, just to build up the anticipation, because I was thinking of how do I start the track, you know? I just didn't want to start it on the verse, so I, I had those chops ready, and that kind of solidified everything, and then initially too one of the things that i started playing with because i found out the track was in g minor was i went to started playing with like what finding out what the chord that i want to be able to use and stuff like that for the intro at least so this is what i came up with so i have everything like build up you know like all my intros i always like them to kind of either start with the drums and my little like signature bell sound but um start building up an anticipation so it's like a slow fade it's just kind of i don't know it sounds a little bit like cinematic and whatnot but i like the way that sounds so this is what i did with the chord let me play the chords and i'll break down how i put them together Okay, so I have four layers that I bust into. I summed them up into, you know, like a one group folder and stuff. So they're all bust into like bus six and whatnot. So the first layer is these chords. Actually, you know what? It'll be easier because I bounce everything that I start as MIDI, I bounce it into audio to save CPU processing. So it just makes it easier because you're not using the exact same effects that are on the MIDI itself. So all you have is like the audio file and then you can just kind of tweak it however you want. So let me actually show you because I do hide the original stuff after I bounce it just so, you know, so I won't like absolutely get rid of it. I, if I wanted to come back and tweak the sound a little bit, I can go back to it. I usually press H to hide or to you know show the tracks and stuff like that. So it's showing 41 tracks, but you can see like sometimes jumps around. So that, I'm gonna press H, so now it shows all the MIDI that I use to make this section right here, so, and the instruments that I use. The first layer was, let me unmute all these. I'm gonna highlight them and I'm gonna press Control M. All right, so we just unmuted them, but the track itself is disabled. As you can see, the track to the left, and that's usually, I think it's Option M. There you go. Alt M to enable, or you can just click on there to enable the track itself. So let's solo all of them so we can play them all at once. So I don't think I put like automation on there, so they might just be playing straight through. So hear how they sound. So we do actually need to enable them. So I have Scalar, and I'll show you what I'm using on each track. All right, all right, all right, all right. We're back. So we're gonna give it a shot again. Um, we seem to have fixed it. So let's get back to it and see what we can get. All right, check it out. So this is what it sounds like. What? Not like that.
Okay, so each layer I do have what I'm using for the road sound. I am using a Velvet 2, which is one of my signature, probably like secret, but not not, not a secret anymore since you guys know about it. Um, I do have it on MK2 preset. I think I might have just tweaked it a little bit, but this I have because I figured out the chords I'm using Scalar 2 on all of it. So it was in G minor, I made a preset where it's like in C minor, it's supposed to be like sort of a harmony to G minor. I'm not sure if that's uh, the technical, you know, it's technically accurate with the theory and whatnot, but that's just kind of my basic theory and uh, how I kind of put it together. So I put it in C minor, just based off like what I was hearing from the vocal. So I made this chord progression in a pattern, which is, if I can actually play it through here, let's see if it works. Uh, there you go. That's it. That's pretty much the intro, you know. So I play it through different instruments. I think I have two instances of the Rhodes piano through the um, Velvet 2 VST plugin which is I really love the sounds that come out of it they're so rich and organic I'm not I've never played a real Rhodes piano but this the way it sounds and this is like highly recommended I mean it has that close to housey deep garage deep house garage sound like you know you can use it for stabs and whatnot highly highly recommend it I don't do too much processing on my sounds just because I do my final processing, my master and whatnot, and I just usually tend to have a good result, just to how the way things sound and how I layer things. So I only have one of the a cheat code here. <laughs> I'm using a sausage fat, and I'm not using too much, just one percent, and actually no color, just so we won't. And I reduce it, you know, so to three point six. So I, when I was mixing it, and this one I have it at seventeen point four and stuff. Another velvet. I have an EQ on it just to roll off the lows on there. I do have another sausage fattener. I just kind of use it like a limiter and a compressor and a distortion all at once. That's how it functions for me and that's how it is usually, but I lower the amount of it and then just so I can mix it in. Because if you have four instances of that playing the exact same chords, it's going to be way too loud, obviously. So I just kind of reduced it. And uh, do I have any panning on any of these? No, I don't. But that's because I have like, I don't have the panning on here, but I do have panning. I have like stereo effects going on. So for example, the first one, um, actually, I think I have that once I bounce it to audio, that's when I put like the panning and whatnot. But even on here, this one is already panned because on this one, I used a hybrid instead of the Velvet 2. So it's one of those presets that I got. Uh, VSTs that I got and the preset is 61, uh, Bruce Funks or so it's just you know, one of these. Playing the exact same chord, so it's gonna give it that bounce and that movement that it needs to just to have a different separation on there. I have an EQ on it, I have an OTT on it, um, just to kind of boosting certain frequencies, the highs and mids, I took out the lows, because I want that for my bass, so I'm not trying to have that early on where it's not needed. Um, I have a one knob pumper, I usually choose either that or the LFO tool to do my sidechain, or sometimes I can do it the old school way with a compressor, but um, when I'm using Logic, this is what I use. I use a combination of this. It gives me a little slight variation just because I can tune how much of the sidechain quality that I want to have. But if I have specific custom drums, obviously I do route the kick to a compressor. I can have that traditional sidechain that we usually like so much. I have a sausage fattener on it. Again, acts like a limiter, compressor, distortion. So it just gives it just like that thickness that you need without doing too many freaking layers on like <laughs> on the sound and stuff like that to thicken it. So I really love that. I only have it on 4%. Ooh, now it's on 5 Uh 4% and then 14% color just to kind of, the color is for, it just increases the air on it. It gives it a little bit of more like the treble bring it up a little bit more just so it can sound a little brighter um, because the sound itself was a little bit um, muffled so I do have a pancake too 
usually I usually usually I use a tremolo uh, just to do my panning and I have presets on there but I just got this pancake too and I've been very excited using that I like the way it does and the presets that it comes with as far as like panning you can change the frequency I mean the um, you can change like the shape of you know um, the frequency on here well not frequency but like the shape of uh, right of the LFO it here shape of the LFO and you can choose to you know so the panning goes from left and right or you can do it some crazy shapes if you wanted to so for example heck let's just go through some of them real quick so you can do like left to right shy so it's like that and that you know all these crazy shapes that you can do with like panning but anyway this is what I kept to, uh, to use on that one another instance of velvet 2 ah, there we go with the scaler on it because I got those same chords playing uh, the channel EQ as usual rolling off the lows I have an OTT on there I don't need to keep showing you but I am boosting certain these frequencies on there I do a sausage fattener as usual and then I'm pancake 2 to pan that and I'm bussing that to uh, bus 5 where I just have a slight chorus on there to give it a little bit of width you know so uh, what I have oh I call it like a disclosure course because I watch it from watching like a disclosure like breakdown videos I just kind of saw how they did their course and I just saved that preset as a disclosure course so I kind of keep that I think I might have tweaked it but yeah I have a couple presets saved that I made so um, this section itself all together like I said I end up bouncing those which is I think it's a uh, control B actually control B and then I just bounce that to audio I mute the tracks immediately and I disable the tracks so that way I'm not going through burning so much CPU with all these effects on them so let me see so I'm gonna turn all these things off I'm gonna press X to get out of the mixer section I'm gonna press H to hide that all the hidden files that I have so I just bounce that to audio and I put it into a summing track so how you do that is you select two channels and you hold shift command D actually what is it shift command D is this already in? oh because this one is already in the stack hold on so what you do is that you hold any sort of tracks that are not part of a track stack you hold to select and then command shift D it's gonna ask you which track stab do you want to create so I want a summing track and then you can create that that's how it becomes part of a group or stack that has its own like bus so it's essentially bus to it gives you like a bus where it's like all coming to sum to that's the correct technical term so um, what I have is those four chords in the intro I did add like a little fade so it rises up so we have like a gradual rise up as as the intro begins so here's again so obviously I have an auto filter on it it's opening up so starting from being closed to like opening up the sound at the same time the automation is on the volume so as it raises uh, raises up it's opening up so it gives it like an introductory feeling to it on top of that the entire intro was that sound I it's not my sound but I found it from a pack on splice and I kinda liked how it is and I notice a lot of producers have like producer tags mostly like a hip-hop production stuff but I just figured like I wanted to have something that made you aware of like that was my kind of track without <laughs> making an obvious vocal producer tag so something that kind of represented me as Crystal Velvet the pr project name Aaron Basil but Crystal Velvet I just wanted to have something to do with like something kind of like magical that'll be like to just sprinkles on top of the track and stuff so I just kind of went with this sound on it I just have right now I usually use just like a stereo delay I think I put on RC20 just to kind of brighten it up I actually reduce the brightness on there just to get the tone down so it's less bright 
because um, I had too many highs already with the vocals and all these other instruments. So I just had to kind of like give it room within the frequency spectrum. So I have a stereo delay on it. Um, just have it a quarter and one eighth and I cut out the lows on there. And of course I got my pancake too, as you guys already know, I love to use that. So it just kind of makes it, gives it that sound. So when you hear that on the track, that's me. You probably heard that through somebody else, but I mean, as far as like vocal, or I mean, as far as like electronic music and stuff like that, I tend to use that. I'm kind of wanting to make it because crystal velvet sound. Anyway, moving on. Um, as I like to use Foley in my tracks just to kind of give it texture in the background. It's something that's light. It's very low at the bottom. Like, look, it's like 27, negative 27 dB. It's very low. You can barely hear, but it's supposed to give that texture on there. Instead of just using like white noise or vinyl crack and whatnot, which you can use through RC20, I think I just put a. Let's see here. It's just essentially people talking. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I just have it at negative 27, just so it's at the bottom right there. Um, do I have any automation on it? Yes. So it's actually gradually rising in volume. So the gain, as it's called, it's gradually rising. What do I have it for? Is it panning? Yeah, it's just a regular fade. So the slope, which is kind of gradually going up. So what I have on there, and then the bells, I already guys, I already show you guys. Oh, another thing was the intro vocals. Like I showed you those chops in the beginning. I also have like a reverse, like I chopped the beginning of the verse and I reversed it. Um, I put a reverb on it and I just had like a gradual like one of these fades gradually going up, rising up at the same time. So it sounds like you won't hear, but you'll be hearing with the chords with that. But all right, so you hear that at the end, it's like a pitch, pitch down. It's called a tape stop towards the end of it. So instead of having like a fade up usually you can do that you can do fades at the beginning at the end of any clip but instead of choosing whether it's going to be a fade or not you can i usually because i have let me see three tools on here i enabled that uh instead of just having two which usually come with that means the right click doesn't operate the same way that it usually does so i use now because of that i use control and then i click left click on here and it'll give you the option where I want it to be a fade or a slow down which will give you that tape stop effect so uh, towards the end you can hear this <coughs> I use that a lot as a transition I might have learned it from another producer that I really like a lot but I just kind of integrate into my own system so that's part of that Let's see I showed you that and then moving on to that's all the intro that I did Showed you the chords that I use on there, and the next part, which would be supposed to be like sort of like a verse or so lead up to a verse. So it's this. Let me, let me play that right now. Okay, uh, so let's go into that. For the vocal stack itself, because we're about to lead into the verse, I might as well break that down right now. I do have, I bust all the vocals to be part of the, I grouped all the vocals and they're now part of the same bus right here, which has on top RC20. I think I have a custom thing going on here just to give the vocals a little bit of texture and make it sound a little bit more interesting. I have a little wobble on there, a little distortion, but not all throughout the track, just a certain portion like top mid range and stuff like that. And a little bit, you know, just the mid rangey section, not too much of the highs and a little bit of flux on there. Uh, I have a little magnetic right there just, and just to give it 
again texture and to make it a little bit of a character that's interesting so I cut out the lows of course and I made the tone just a little bit darker rather than like high because again with everything all together there's a lot of like sounds that I didn't want to clash within the frequency spectrum that are part of you know the high so might as well cut out a little bit a lot of people use soothe and all that stuff I just think it's it's just good to just use the classic techniques of like EQing and compression multiband compression and things like that so I have the RC20 have a little bit of OTT I boosted the highs again which seems kind of counterintuitive but taking out whatever is remain whatever remains after you take out the highs with the RC20 that's what you're boosting on the high so you're not boosting the original highs you're not bringing them back by origin the same way they were um, made you are bringing them back from what's already cut out so it's not as harsh that's what I think happens here so and then the mid-range I'm taking down a little bit lows I take down because the only thing that should be in lows is obviously as you guys know like kick and the bass and stuff so this is what I have done on this on the vocal stack RC20 I have an OTT I have a C1 gate this actually waves one so because I just wanted to have I could have used a so dynamic any other dynamic processor so let me see ba -ba 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 -ba. I could have used the trans X on there or I could have used smack attack um, but I just went with the gate just so I can have I wanted the vocals to just as soon as they're done they'll cut off you know like they'll so it'll be let me just show you the difference with and without Yeah, so whenever it just like goes ah, 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 it cuts off. It just completely closes that. And then I used an LFO tool to just kind of give the vocals a little bounce, a little side chain in on there. So, yeah. Let me see. Got some panning going on. So, yeah, you got some panning going left and right. And so... One of the main parts that I actually didn't show you. Okay, so these roads. So these were part of like a sample. Like I, like a hip hop producer and whatnot, I do use like loops and samples. I don't feel like there's any shame in doing that. We all use Splice. So this was one of the samples that I found and um, I built around that and stuff like that. This is entire track. So this is what I found. It's what I use for that. <laughs> I didn't chop it up or anything. I didn't pitch. It. I didn't chop it up or anything. I didn't pitch it down. I use it as is. I just kind of affected it by adding process. I just process it essentially, so it sounds the way it does. So. Yeah, so again, that tape stopped towards the end, but the way I processed them, before before they even processed, they sounded like this. The difference, the difference, you know, obviously the RC20, I put that on there, LFO tool, have the side chain going on, you know, imprint on there, let me see just so you can have the imprint in there to do the transient you know it emphasizes the transient and the it's like a multi-band transient shaper the same thing with that c1 gate that i used earlier it was to you know to be able to like emphasize certain transients so i have it on specific setting on here boosting the highs a little bit um and just leveling off everything so it has a lot of stuff underneath the hood um i won't go into that in this video i just kind of wanted to break down how this was put together all the stuff yeah so moving on we have an OTT on there as well and I bust everything to bus 7 which I have another RC20 put a little reverb on there so I wanted to bust a reverb on it but I didn't put it on the entire frequency spectrum so I just kind of put like on the mid rangey to like towards the highs and whatnot and then I have another gate on there 
So I want my transients to be very sharp. Just hit and close so I leave space in between for all the stuff. You know, I just like it to be just kind of super heavy on the attack and just quick. And it's just, it gives a little stabby sound. I don't know, I can't really describe it, but that's really why I did that. So I have these chords. <laughs> And then your typical riser. I have a DS on it because I just didn't want it to be that harsh. Again, I'm always taking out all the high frequencies in there. I have an OTT, 38%, and I'm just having it panned with a different sh shape on there, different presets. So. Another thing was on there. I have another re re reversed vocal. So let's just get to that section through right here. So yeah, got that as a transition effect. And then I think we'll move on to what we have as a. Okay, let's see. Obviously, I use the riser effects. I should have organized them more, but I usually have them colored and stuff like that. So I have the risers. I do have my bells again as another transition. It's kind of one of those things, like a motif. I always kind of bring it back. The vocals, they're self-explanatory. I only have the gain up to six, but that's only because the volume itself. Like I have them, the way I had mixed them earlier, they weren't kind of, let me just play it like, they're not peak. They're not peaking, so it's not like you know, <laughs> I'm having all the way to the red. I just didn't want to have to throw a compressor on it. That's just the way I did. I'm not sure exactly how why I did it this way, but this is. All right, let's break down the next section real quick. So. Okay, so I guess this takes us to this section where I started the percussion. Um, I actually had started earlier in the intro because I started outside of like the vocal intro, like I had the just little hi hats going on here. Oh, very key important part <laughs> is this little symbol. It's my intro. You know. I use that all the time. It's not the same symbol, but I, you know, it gives a nice little solid introductory feel to it. And then we started with. Uh, let me just mute the drums. So pretty much the kind of loops, splice, and all of the other so any other sources that I've like gotten somewhere else, I just kind of combine it. So so yeah, splice and any other place that I've gotten the loops. I think I have like a loop folder, all my samples and things like that. So I just kind of put them together right here, combine them. I have a fade, so they gradually rise up, and of course I have a tape stop here to have a transition on top of having like risers and whatnot so that is all summed into one drum group which is what do i have on there like i like i said earlier like i don't do too much processing on my drums or any of my effects just because putting a couple things towards that i can just do everything else in the master it's not the normal traditional way of doing it maybe but so far, the way I hear things and my sound, this is how I process things. They end up just sounding thick enough for me and 
because of the layers that I got it, it never seems like it's too much. I've, I've experimented earlier on with like just throwing a bunch of compressors, multi-brand this like that, and like reverbs and all that on a, it just crowded the whole thing. By the time I got to the master track and try to master it, it was either way too loud or I was, because I like to put a lot stuff, a lot more stuff at the master rather than putting it on as, you know, like as a, um, as an insert on each track, you know? I'd rather just put it at the end and just mix a final mix because that's what it's all about at the end just like how it sounds at the very end so I'd rather instead of doing it if there's minor things I need to do like minor EQs and stuff like that I do it on the track but I don't do too much like compression I don't do too like too much tweaking on the thing you know that affects the balance of the entire track I'd rather do it towards the end so on this drum bus Right as I say that, I actually show you. I actually show you this thing where I process this too much. But I mean, it's rare, you know. Like on my snare, look at I only have two things: an EQ and a sausage fattener. The hi hats, I only have this much because I really wanted to tame it, and everything I would have done at the end wouldn't have saved or given me the sound that I was looking for. So I was, I, I reduce obviously the lows on there. LFO2 just to give it a little bounce and movement. OTT just to reduce it a little bit in the high frequency and mid range. Uh, I have a deesser again, just kind of compressing it. You know, deesser is like you know, compressor essentially. So it's like I'm taking out again all those higher frequency um, frequencies on there. I have an imprint which is a multi band. Um, it's a multi band transient shaper. So. I have that on there just so I can emphasize the attack of the hi-hat I really want you to hear where it goes like tss, 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 but not tss, 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 but like tss, tss, tss. it's very specific like I like that kind of crunchier sound um, I have a gate on there just to cut out again I really want to do open and then close hit and then close immediately it just sounds more uh, I don't know how to describe it, but yeah, it's, it gives you that punch that I like. Gate, and then I have a wider, just so I've spread it. I use just uh, Infected Mushroom wider, and I put it all away, you know, so I can give it all the way to left and right, just so I can give it that width that it needs to, um, instead of just sitting in the center, in the middle and stuff. So this one, I don't do that much on, yeah, I don't do too much on it, because if it's sitting there, it's balanced with the one on top, where it's on the left and right. So it's, here's how it sounds actually. Let me put from right here. See that? That's it, you know? Um, without it, this is how it sounds. Let me just show you guys. Select that, Command U to just kind of make a loop in that specific section. I'm going to solo it so you can hear it. I'm going to show you before and after the processing. It's a tighter sound. It's a tighter sound and that's how I like it. So that's the reason why I have so mo so many of those effects and but usually again I don't process too much, you know. I had a cowbell on there somewhere on there. So, okay, let's get to that. In this section, let's see, select that. In each, in each section, I always have like a transition effect on there, which is like a little riser and a cymbal that drops. I only did that in the intro and some parts over here. So, it's like a crash. cowbell self-explanatory even that I didn't process that I might have just processed it earlier and I didn't do any more processing than it needed to so let's go to this section right here just for the drums so for the kick and snare I have two sections obviously I labeled this one side chain uh, kick and snare because I was side chaining some of the chords and and some parts of the bass 
using the kick and snare in there. Um, so I'm left. So this actually, it's, let me see what I route it to. It'd be easier to show. Yeah, I think I had routed it somehow. I'll show you guys later if I remember that. But I know this is a side chain for sure. Obviously, kick and snare. Simple stuff. Just rolled off a little bit of the... I rolled off obviously the lows only on the sides because I want the lows to be on the mid you know so I just kept them on there moved them from the side so I can leave room for my bass and stuff like that because I do like a little stereo bass so oh just do the drums that's it that's the drums that's it that's the drums right there so um they pretty much kind of like, I mean, I take out certain parts like the kick and snare, and then I just bring them back, things like that. But the, the drums don't really change too much. And tracks, I'm, I'm just been kind of adopting a thing where it's like, I'm using a lot of complex minor ninth and 13th chords and 11th chords. So the track is already complex. I do still want to keep it sort of accessible, sort of simple, sort of poppy, but at the same time, you know a little bit interesting so i don't want to do all these incredible crazy changes in through my songs and whatnot it's already complex as it is um i prefer to have minor changes if anything you know in different sections i think the vocal is what's carrying us through and that vocal should be like the attention of it so that's why i have my drums the way i have them without too much variation and you know i don't have like a breakdowns like you know like all that crazy stuff I, it should be very simple and accessible and leave room for the vocalist to do their magic on it. So that's kind of how I process my drums on there. And that's how I kind of approach producing, really. Not too crazy. I used to want to put all these crazy things happening. And some tracks require that, but just not on this one. So that's what we have on that. The verse, let me see what we have. Let's go from intro verse to the chorus, actually. my bass simple pretty self-explanatory right here um, they're just playing off of these chords uh, let's go from here actually My signature bass sounds. Um, I just use retro synth. I created this from uh, just like my love for disclosure sound, so I just kind of like disclosure and that kind of deep house K Tronada sound. So I just kind of made it my custom bass through here. You know, this is kind of my sound now. I when I watched Disclosure actually do their breakdown. I show I saw that they make their bass out of like multi like a few layers of the bass and they use something else completely. So making this through retro synth actually just ended up you could say I failed to make the original what it sounded like initially, so I arrived at my own sort of like sound. So I use this bass cuts through like a mid range. You can listen to it through like little on your laptop and it's still you can still hear it as a mid range, as a low, like sub frequency on it. It's like 
a lot of people usually would use multiple layers of a bass to just be able to hear the mid-range, the low sub frequency and the highs on there. So I think this cuts through, man, because actually what I have on it, it's still mono, but it's detuned 22 to, you know, 22, uh, uh, what is it called? It's not semitones, but it's detuned, have it up 22. I can't think of what the name is, but I have a stereo spread of one and I'm using four voices on there, you know. Um, what else do I have on that that makes it special? Oh, I have a little glide on there at 60 milliseconds. Um, I don't use a chorus on there because I like to use the... I bust it to uh, bus 9 where I actually have that Tau Chorus LX, which is like the Juno chorus, the famous Juno chorus that gives it that width. Usually I have it on stereo width, but I, I don't have it on there just because I didn't want it too wide. But I do have that chorus. It, it gives you that just like wider sound generally. Um, I think I have an LFO tool to give it as a side chain. I think initially I tried to, to route the kick and snare originally to the bass and stuff. It wasn't working out for me, so I just threw an LFO tool on there. But So it's definitely riding with the Let's get to the kick and snare. I didn't show you guys this percussion section. But it's simply this. Hear that movement? It's going left and right. I have, that's just the pancake too, man. I have it over two bars and Yeah, um, I have a gate on it so I can have it sound a little bit tight. And the transient, I have two OTTs. Actually, the second one was a mistake because I just meant to have, this is what it sounded like before without it. With it. I really love the way that sounded that. It just gave it a little washed out, way too compressed sound. But I kept that because that worked that worked with this. I kept that because I worked with this. I just like the way that that sounded and, and uh, I kept that as that is. So um, with the bass and the drums. So that's my bass sound that I used. The Foley, obviously people talking. What else did I put? I still have it labeled as disclosure bass, even though it's now like I've adopted into my own thing. But oh, actually, on the on the sound itself, let's go back to it. Uh, let's check this out. Alarm. Okay, this is the EQ that I have on it. Again, I kept calling it disclosure bass, but it's now it's, it's a crystal velvet bass. Um, I just cut off the low on here just so I can have the kick sitting there. It fits with almost any kick, really. This bass is like my signature. I probably shouldn't even be showing this secret sauce, but yeah. <laughs> and then LFO2 on there. Um, Unfortunately or fortunately, that's pretty much everything that I that's in this track. It's pretty simple track. It's straightforward. And I kind of wanted to keep it on there. I didn't want to do way too much. Um, everything that just happens is just like, you know, I'm taking off certain, I'm taking out certain parts. Like I'll take out the kick right here.
I just took off the rest of the percussion and I just have a kick and snare. And then, you know, it's usually kind of the alternative to like a snap or whatever, but there was already that part where it's like with the vocals. The vocal chops that already came into the song. So that took out less time for me to like actually process the vocals. So that worked perfectly. I, I just kept it simple with the drums right here. So the risers as usual, and then just for the second like post like chorus and whatnot, I just took off you know the drums again. Like I'm just taking out and putting back things in there just to add different transition instead of like sometimes just adding like you know the kick drum or the snare that building up and all that to like impacts and all that. I'm just keeping it pretty bare. Um, so little things you can do is just like you know. <laughs> The kick and the snare is taken out of the percussion, nothing, and then you drop it. Simple, nothing crazy. Even with the, like a little cymbal, that's all I use on that part, you know, so. That's it. And I bring back the bass on there, so. Pretty... I'm trying to combine, you know, like essentially like underground techniques, underground production techniques with like pop production techniques and stuff. So I'm trying to make it sort of like that underground sound, but with like a pop like effect, you know, like so bridge the two worlds, which I love. So sometimes I just keep the production itself super simple because everything else that's going on is very complex. The chords that are being used and stuff like that, the bass lines. So I don't want it to have too big of like a busy kind of a lot of things going on in there so i mean again that's not every track but in this track for sure it was like simple and straightforward so let's see <laughs> vocal really carried this entire track all the way through so I didn't really have to do as much so um, even the again the vocal chops towards the end let's go to it uh, I think it's like right here removing elements now it's just like an outro there's no bass, obviously kick and snare. Your typical risers, downers, my typical bell, signaling a transition between sections. So it doesn't have to be that complicated in certain tracks, you know, unless they're like an instrumental. I mean, everything now is glued together with, in a master channel, I have a sausage fattener, gives it that, you know, a little thickness on there. Really, it's just acting like a compressor. Once it's routed through here, even if you don't even turn it up, it just gives it that little, adds that extra layer that you need on there. Um, and then I route it through isotope. I was on seven. I still haven't upgraded, but this one works. I'm not fixing. I'm not fixing it if it ain't broken. So this is what works. I do usually have my own preset settings on there. If they would work, 
Uh, let's see what we got. Okay. So yeah, I have like little presets and some of them are came with and I tweaked and then I resaved them on here so I can access them. These are the ones that I usually use. These uh, slight variation is just only to make it a little wider and things like that. I've slight, you know, but I pretty much go to the exact same thing on there. I have a dynamic EQ and I tweak it every single time this for the chain. So a uh, dynamic EQ on there, um, compressor on there, vintage compressor on there, vintage tape. Usually I have an imager to get, make it a little wider, but I just didn't want make it too wide and all that and having phasing issues. Vintage limiter and uh, pretty much keeps the track on. I only put on here on the master like at negative 10.6 just because I'm recording on OBS, but generally it would have been at, you know, zero dB, but that's it. That's the entire track. <laughs>